Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Adobe Live. It looks like, chat, we are in a bakery. A lot of croissants happening. Welcome back. It's good to see everyone. Uh, my name is Alexis Bustos, and I'm here with the brilliant Brittany Eric. Wow, that's a lot of croissants happening in the chat. Um, I think people are really into the food theme today. I love it. It's a full on French bakery in the chat today and um, carbs, carbs, carbs. It's all we can, it's all we can say there, which is very fitting. Yep. Today we're, uh, we're creating a cooking app inspired by Chrissy Teigen's Cravings cookbook. And uh, this is day two of a two day stream and um, I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm too. not as hungry as I was yesterday, thankfully. Nope. So I we're had ready for all push the ahead of time. I'm ready. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, tell me where you're coming from, chat. Besides this amazing bakery, it's the, it's the best. I love that. Um, let's take a look at the schedule before we jump in. Uh, jump in. Uh, let's, let's see what we got. We got a big lineup nowadays, you know. Man, we start at 7.30 and we go all the way to 2.30. So right after this, maybe remember to check in with Andrea Hawks, a daily creative challenge um, right after, and then Doodle Therapy with Alice Lee. And oh my gosh, I love the name Doodle Therapy. I love what they're doing. I love what Alice Lee is doing. I'm, I'm all about it. And uh, yeah, just make sure you, uh, you come check us out every day here on Behance. And if you're joining us from YouTube, come on over to Behance. Come check out what uh, all the cool things that we got going over here. You can actually see these projects that we're working on. Um, how are you today, Brittany? You know what? I'm doing great. I feel like it was raining all last night and every time I have like a good thunderstorm, I just feel really like ready to go for the next day. Oh, something that. very refreshing about it. A thunderstorm? Like a summer thunderstorm? Like a real here? summer thunderstorm. We almost never get like a full on multiple hour thunderstorm in Colorado, but we did yesterday. That sounds like the most soothing thing in the world. We don't get that here in California. It's Ugh. sadly the same weather. It is beautiful, but it is the same. We do not understand how to dress. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> because of it. Yeah. Hi, chat. How, where's everyone coming from? Let's see here. Uh, Florida. Ooh, what's up? Ooh. Australia. Excellent. Hey. Oh my God. Chicago. What's up? And some folks from SF. Well. This is, uh, is going to be a good day. I hope everybody has some good weather happening for them as well. Maybe some beautiful thunderstorms at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Well, I'm really excited to start cooking today. I am, too. Quite, quite oh. literally. As I quite say, I don't know if you mean that in terms of your idea, you know, make some food after this or start cooking on designs. But either way, I'm on board. Exactly. What do I, what do I mean? What do I mean? Um, and right at the end of our stream today, we're not going to be doing portfolio reviews. We'll be actually doing a review of the creative challenges that Andrea Hawk will be showing you at, uh, or that she did yesterday. So that should be very fun. I'm excited. And um, let's get into it. What do you think? Yeah, let's go for it. Um, let's just do a quick recap maybe, and then we'll just hop right into the designs. How's that sound, Alexis? Sounds awesome. Great. Um, so if you're new to the stream, um, my name is Brittany Urich. If you tuned in yesterday, my name is still Brittany Urich. Um, you can find me online um, at Brittany Urich. I'm based in Denver, as Alexis mentioned. Um, I work as a senior UX designer and content strategist at Ogilvy. Um, since we're doing a food theme out today, um, my favorite snack food is goldfish. My favorite real food is pasties. And we talked a lot about pasties yesterday. Basically, they're just, you know, a pie crust filled with whatever meat and vegetables you like. And it's like a, a weird northern Michigan hamburger, right? That's it's just any way to bring carbs and meat into a into your mouth in maybe way. that's what the croissant was or people like trying to find a pasty emoji is that oh. i don't know let us know in the chat if you were trying to talk about pasties if not it's totally fine um and then i am currently reading i'll be gone in the dark which is a uh, true story about one woman's hunt for the golden state killer um so if anyone wants to talk to me about true crime all about it oh um, man love that yeah, so what we're working on, uh, we're on day two of designing a mobile app based on Chrissy Teigen's Cravings website. Um, so if you were here yesterday, you know that Chrissy launched a cookbook um, a couple years ago and a companion website last year. Uh, you also know that Chrissy Teigen did not hire me to do this. Uh, this is just a fun passion project. I love food. I figured what better way than to kick off the summer with some summer themed like apps. So yesterday, we took a look at sort of the homepage for this app, analyzed some different modules that we might need to include in our app. Um, and then we talked about the brand colors. She's got some really bold and bright colors. Um, and we love that. Alexis and I were all about it. 
Oh my goodness. Yes, the chat loved them too. What do right? you guys think of these colors? I mean, there's so much you can do with them. Mm -hmm. There's so much to, ways to kind of incorporate in already existing brands colors, right? And we kind of went over that a little bit with, um, with how you're transitioning to the app. Yeah. Um, and then we talked a lot about fonts and how Bison is, you know, my new favorite font um, since finding it. And then uh, we pulled in some Chrissy logos. And then these are my hand drawn in Illustrator doodles. So we noticed that there are a lot of, you know, sort of squiggles, lines, doodles throughout this website. And we wanted to make sure that we're pulling that sort of fun personality into the app. So yesterday we uh, hopped into uh, just some uh, discussions about designing for iPhone 10s, right? So we're making sure that we're adhering to our margins and our safe spaces. We talked a little bit about grids um, and then we jumped into some app design. So yeah, and we, we got pretty far yesterday. Yeah, we did pretty well for, you know, hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, pretty good. Um, so I actually had an idea last night. Um, middle of the night, I woke up and I went, what could I do to make this better? So we had talked about using the Stark plugin to check that um, the colors that Chrissy had, you know, the white, sort of white on red, it wasn't accessible. We wanted to make sure everything was accessible for all users. So we switched to black. But something Alexa said yesterday sort of really stuck with me and she said it was kind of high contrast. Mm -hmm. And I 100% agree. So I propose that we swap this to white, with a black border and maybe not that thick of a border, but just maybe a little bit of a black border. And I don't know, I thought I'd try it. I'm not super crazy about it as I look at it. Maybe let us know how you feel in the chat because this is gonna be something that's a sticky adder throughout the rest of the page. Yeah. Um, it might be interesting to see what happens to it once you put it in Stark again. Mm -hmm. right? Is that small detail going to affect the visibility as much as maybe we assume it will? Yeah, you know, I've heard a rumor, and it's just a rumor, but I've heard a Love rumor it. that white on red, or white on red, that black outline with white text is almost always accessible. But Stark doesn't seem to be pulling that in. They're just pulling the color. Interesting. So maybe we'll just go ahead and stick with the black. I don't know. I've heard it's yeah. a rumor. I don't know if it's actually true. I, I love just, it. Someone love told me once, and I thought I'd try it, right? Ooh. We'll stick with black for now. But. Rumors, so true crime. So true crime of you. Ooh, the yes. rumor going around about this black outline on white font. And um, what does it really mean? <laughs> what does it really mean? I love oh. it. Chat, what do you guys think? Um, yeah, Julie, Julia kind of says, yeah, it's kind of hard to read. Kind of mm -hmm. hard to read at that. Um, mm -hmm. and if it, it's the outline? And it's the outline. Yeah, the outline. And Kendall's okay. like, it's giving, it's giving her 90, 90s vibes, which is... So perfect. Maybe that's what Chrissy's going for, right? I have no clue. Maybe um, she's a she, she, she maybe she's a late eighties baby. She's pretty. She's not that. She's, she's not much older. Yeah. But, um, man, nineties is always coming back for sure with designs. It's been back for years now. Oh yeah. That nineties aesthetic. These and these colors are sort of giving me nineties vibes too. So let's just maybe assume that that's what we're going for here. Oh, so. I love it. I like it, but all right. So we're, we uh, played around with the homepage a little bit, but where we left off was working on this recipe page, right? So we wanted to make sure that we could include at least one full recipe so everyone could see um, Chrissy's glorious spicy miso pasta. Highly recommend if you've not had a minute to try it. And uh, we were just sort of talking about how we would translate that over to the app, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, so I sort of had a thought, and Alexis, tell me what you're thinking, but mm -hmm. as we scroll this on mobile, it's just really long, right? How would you feel if we sort of had like an ingredients tab and a directions tab, so you could swipe back and forth between the two? Ooh, love that, yeah. So yeah, just, I think. Yeah, take down all the time, you know, break down that time of scrolling and just kind of swipe between these. Uh, and you know, that's what you're kind of doing constantly while you're, while you're reading through these recipes online or oh, anywhere else 100 percent. you're just like why do i need 10 cups of sugar oh i see it's like a sh 10 cup of sugar type vibe okay got it you know have you ever what seen am i baking Brooklyn with 10 nine cups nine. of sugar <laughs> no i haven't okay Sarah. so there is there's an episode of brooklyn 99 where um one of the characters amy who is notoriously terrible at cooking follows a recipe 
a recipe that she finds and it requires like 10 cups of sugar and a bunch of like oil and it they discover it's actually a code for something but he's supposed to be making like tomato sauce and it requires 10 cups of sugar and so everyone's eating it they're like this is terrible she's like i followed it to a t that's hilarious and in that moment i knew that recipes would help me solve crimes Yeah, it's it's like the go-to when you're describing. It's like 10 cups of sugar. It's like, no, nothing is 10, 10, 10 cups of sugar. No, nothing is ever. What is the most recent recipe you've made from this cookbook? Is it the miso pasta or? Um, you know, the miso pasta, but I keep going back to my favorite. It is um, sort of a spicy chicken with a mango avocado salsa. Mm. Um, and it is amazing. delicious. It was my first Chrissy recipe. It will definitely not be my last Chrissy recipe. But I think it's, I think the name of it is technically Chipotle chicken uh, with a mango avocado salsa. So it's sort of like a barbecue sauce with Chipotle's in there, a little bit of honey, um, some whiskey. So it's just this really good, smoky, spicy, like f- chicken. It wow. is. Wow. Stop. Wow. So good. That is good. That's a lot. That sounds very very Chrissy Teigen, very 2020 vibe. Mm-hmm. Perfect and I'm, to make, perfect comfort food. It is the best comfort food. And I am not the biggest um, fan of spice. So I sort of tone down the Chipotle. I don't put the entire can in there like it recommends. I go mm-hmm. like half, Got it. <laughs> but it's still delicious. And then that mango avocado and like red onions also just calms everything down. It oh, is thanks. so good. Chat, what is what do you guys eat for dinner last night? Speaking of food, tell us. We want to know. I want to hear. I think we should have our own little Adobe Live chat cookbook. Seriously, going. I mean, if you're gonna spam us with a bunch of croissants, this is what the chat's gonna be about, you guys. Yeah. It's be about food. Yeah. So it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different ingredients going on in here. Um, and you know, we talked about this. We're gonna have to figure out what to do, right? This red on this background, I guess I'll double check, but I'm pretty positive that this red on this sort of lighter background is not accessible. So we might have to figure out an alternative to the classic Chrissy styling. Mm-hmm, Any mm-hmm. suggestions, chat? Let's see, chat is talking about some food. Mm-hmm. Okay, oh, that's acceptable. Arturo had fish and chips. I love you know fish what? And chips. That, I love fish and chips. Fish and chips is hard to beat, right? Wow. You know what I'm noticing in here? Okay, so we've got, and this may be how Chrissy got around some of this, right? Hmm. Large text. So if it's, you know, 18 points or higher, it is compliant, it is accessible. No. Uh, so maybe let's see. I have no clue how large. Oh, we got 20. We're good to go. We're good to roll with these. It's really cool. If you want to like um, go back to that, uh, go back to Stark the plugin. If anybody's unfamiliar yeah. with the plugin we're using right now, um, really cool little tip guide, uh, some guidelines that they're giving you. Um, mm-hmm. You know, normal text, no, not accessible. Enlarge the text. I love that. Yeah. I love a plugin that's there to help, but also to help you solve. Well, as you go, so it's not just saying this isn't accessible. It's right. Like, help you get accessible. And you know, they're calling out that large text can be 24 pixels or 18, as long as it's bold. So you know what? I'm on board with that. I say we run with it. That How often do you use, do you feel like you use Stark in your, or an accessibility tool? I use an accessibility tool every single time I'm designing. Um, Excellent. And I think we talked about yesterday, one of my favorites is Wave. It's a plugin that you can download for Chrome because it will scan your entire um, page and it'll scan the code as well as, you know, the actual designs mm-hmm. so it can scan live web pages. But anytime I'm designing, anytime I'm, you know, checking to see if something is, you know, allowed, I want to make sure it's accessible, right? You don't want to just design something and decide it's beautiful and then, oh, sorry, <laughs> can't do it anymore. Right. So yeah, that is sort of my first and foremost before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that that's accessible. Love that. True, yeah. a true pro tip. Yeah. And we're not going to write Chrissy's whole thing in here, but I figured we'd get some description text going just so we can see it. And I'm going to turn my grid on so I can make sure that I'm actually, you know, Mm -hmm. lining things up where they should be. And that's why we've got the grid. We have some more, um, some more food that people have cooked recently in chat. We got Julia has a, 
uh, had a healthy big salad and I I love that. I, I am a big fan of like a summer salad. A big right? salad. Like big salad is the key there. Salad mm -hmm. won't fill you up, but a big salad. A big salad will. Perfect. It absolutely will. Oh man. Uh, Janessa made avocado cucumber sushi and what? Janessa, <laughs> you wanna wanna send me some it's sushi and or the really recipe? Nice girl. I will accept either. <laughs> oh my goodness, that goodness. Sounds so good. All right. Awesome. So yeah, so you're, you're working on a, a side scroll here almost, right? We're going to be yeah. tog or maybe a toggle is what we want to call it. You know, with that? Yeah. Yeah. We can call it a toggle. I think that's a fair, a fair title, but you know what I'm trying to figure out? I've seen, you know, some side scrolls sort of setting like this. I've seen some, um, where, you know, you might have a disabled color and an enabled color. I don't know. Mm -hmm, so maybe mm -hmm. we've got a little bit of a lighter gray. Hmm. <laughs> or maybe the actual, maybe the line just, that is the highlight. Is this? Is yeah. This yeah. I'm on board with that too. It's a great option. Um, let's turn this off just so we can take a peek. You know, now Alexis, the question I have for you is, um, oh, yeah. do you think we need to extend this line out farther? Or do you think that we're good to sort of stop it right after the the ingredients themselves and then it can sit right under directions let's i think underneath i would love to you know i'd love to see maybe this is something that could be fun to prototype um yeah. kind of quickly or towards the end and mm -hmm. we can see how that looks i the way I, it looks to me now appears like okay well if i swipe i'm that line is going to appear or maybe have a cool interaction or animation to go over under directions so cool that looks, that looks a looks like a convention i've seen before so awesome. Sometimes and sometimes that's sometimes that's the best thing you can do, right? Is just like yeah. step away from it and be like, what has been done before? Mm-hmm. What a what do people like? Yeah. So let's turn borders off on here. And then let's double check what what kind of ingredients have we got going on? Let's see. Here we go. This is this is what we all came here for, these in, these ingredients. Right. Um, just design. Know. You're also getting a cooking show, you guys. I know. And I'm going to, I'm going to share a secret. It's not a pro tip. It's just a, how Brittany works. Mm -hmm. um, I like to, if I've got a huge, big list like that, I just screenshot it and pull it up. So I don't have to look through the whole screen to do it. Cause you know what? We're about quality content, not just Laura Mipsum over here. Right. Love it. Quality content all the way. Yeah. So we kind of talked about this yesterday, you know, like what, um, what inspired you to use to, to kind of to go through a cookbook? Um, and we kind of talked a little bit about like something that's already been there before, mm -hmm. right? Do you want to kind of talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, I think the last time I was on Adobe Live, um, you know, I built a mobile hiking app with input from everyone in the chat. And that was a ton of fun uh, because I don't usually get to design with things that don't exist, right? I usually have to follow along with brands. So I thought that this time around, I would maybe show something a little more true to my normal work style, right? Usually I am working with clients that have a well-established brand. I'm working with clients that, you know, might have specific goals in mind. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, let's apply this as if Chrissy is here and she's got her goals and she's looking to make an app and, you know, sort of connect with fans on an even more personal level than just her website. So we're sort of pulling in, you know, colors that she already had existing, character styles, um, pulling in some icons that we found on her website and those doodles, just because I thought it would be a really fun exercise. I mean, it would be fun to show everyone how I normally work. I love that. And I love that it's an expansion of an idea. So it's using an already established concept, which we talked about yesterday as a great way to kind of get a portfolio piece together, do a little practice on your own. Um, and then it's taking that concept and not necessarily replicating it, but it's expanding upon it. Yeah. Right? And I think we talked about this would be a great um, sample project for anyone yeah. that wanted to, you know, get involved or look for something for their portfolio. You know, find a website that already exists and create either a better, better mobile version mm -hmm. or a newer mm -hmm. version of it or just create an app like we're doing here. You know, it shows how you think critically. It shows how you can both take you know, business needs and user needs um, in mind. And, you know, I think it's just a great, a great exercise for anyone that's looking to level up their design skills. 
I totally agree. I totally agree. It's fo- being able to follow constraints, follow work within constraints and follow actual guidelines that have been set for you. Mm-hmm. That is a great thing to showcase if you are a starting designer. Um, Cause it's something you're going to have to do your entire career. Really is. It, it really is, is not going away. Let this me tell is a you. really cool practice. As, as important as it is to, to do things like the daily creative challenges, which is are sometimes brand new projects and coming up with really uh, brand new designs on the spot or what have you. Maybe it's not even BCC. It's, that's very hard. So we, we talked a little bit about it yesterday around like taking something, it's not starting from scratch. No need to start from scratch if you are feeling intimidated. And I think this yeah. is a really great example of how a project like that can can work for you. Um, actually, you have a you have a fan. Kendall Kendall says loved the hiking app session. Hey, Look at that reoccurring. I think, I think I might know Kendall. This might this might be a secret plant. Ooh, love it. <laughs> Thanks, Kendall. <laughs> Shout out to Kendall. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Cornell has asks a question about quality content, which is great. If English is not um, is not his native language, interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and if if they should write descriptions in in new, in their native language and put them into Google Translate, or go with lorem ipsum, that's a really interesting thought there. And it's something that I feel silly that I haven't really realized before is that lorem ipsum could be used as a as a really great tool for people who maybe are showcasing to an English audience but don't don't have English as a, uh, as a native language. Yeah. And, you know, I think we talked a little bit yesterday um, sort of about lorem ipsum. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, one thing I think could be really helpful is if you're designing with something that already exists, you have content that already exists. So if you're pulling from a website that's already there, you have the ability to use that content. Um, In the same point, I also think it might really be interesting to share an app in your native language and then share the same designs for English. I mean, I've worked with Mm -hmm. plenty of clients where we have to translate. Um, and so we have to accommodate for three or four different languages, whether they read left to right or right to left. And that changes how you design. So it might be really interesting to both showcase, you know, your native language and English so that you can show your flexibility. I love that. I love that thought. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a using, you know, the going the way of using content that may already be created. And that's already kind of going along with the idea of there isn't, there isn't a need to kind of create your own and uh, don't start from scratch necessarily, but also, yeah. Oh my gosh. Everything. Talk about accessibility. If you can showcase that you can bring your language into your designs, like Mm -hmm. wherever you are, people are, or the internet is expanding and everybody at some point in the next 10 years, probably less is going to have a smart device and be able to access your designs in some way. So that's a, that's great. It's a great tip. Mm Mm-hmm. And again, it's something that I've had to do or seen in real life. So I know it's true. I know Mm -hmm. that it's something that people have to actually think about. Um, Oh, absolutely. So there's no reason not to showcase it. Plus that if your native language isn't English and you're designing with English text, kudos to you. Bravo. That is incredibly difficult. um, And I think it's worthwhile pointing out that that's not your only language. Absolutely. I think using using it as strength is just so much better of a concept to think about it as instead of um, necessary, maybe, maybe something like weakness or some, something that's hard for you to do. Yeah. Um, if you are though needing to, maybe you have to bring your designs into English, you know, maybe join a community just like, just like Adobe live and get over into our discord and, or find people who are native speaking and have them check it for you. Just yeah. Like that. Just kind of have them go through the grammar. Um, I work with a pretty global team as well. And, I more than once have just gotten big paragraphs of like, does this sound right? And I'll just yeah. look at it really quick. And, and that's, that's kind of it. You know, and that's what um, communities like Discord or your peers are for, right? I mean, I feel like on Discord, everyone is so willing to help out, um, take a look at something for just a minute. So use the resources, get involved. Absolutely. If you guys aren't uh, familiar with what we're talking about with the Discord, um, Discord is actually where the Adobe Live um, community hangs out. Um, So if you go to behance.net backslash challenge, challenge backslash XD, you will find the daily creative challenges that um, come up um, every week or every two weeks. They change 
right now it's Andrea Hawk, who is awesome. Yeah. She's leading these challenges and you'll get a, you'll unlock a challenge every day. And on that page, you'll be able to also chat, find a place to chat with the community and get into the community discord. And yeah, it's just one of those great things. There's a lot of great starter files. It's a lot of great practice. You can, and a lot of great resources going through the discord actually right now. So I encourage you, if you don't have your community, here's one right here for you. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to call out something interesting that I'm noticing as we're comparing sort of the screenshots of desktop and the screenshots of mobile. Um, so on desktop, I think we've got these like chunky numbers. We've got some fun, you know, doodles and scribbles behind them. And then we lose a little bit of that on mobile. And my guess is because, you know, it gets a little bit bigger. We need to make sure that we can still read everything on the screen without taking up too much space. But I sort of think we should bring it back, right? I think if I'm reading this, three paragraphs might seem like a lot of content, whereas right now I'm like, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. What do you hmm. think, Alexis? This is interesting. This, this is really interesting how they've, you know, the big block text, it is, it, it kind of loses the, the fun. It's definitely losing the fun that it has on web. Mm -hmm. What if, hmm, I wonder if you can scroll through each, each, each uh, section of directions. Like what mm. if your directions continue, right? Like maybe so there's I'm a way to, or maybe there's, you can actually select direction one, two, and three and stay within each. Um, so maybe it's not a swipe because we already have that function. Yeah. Um, so maybe I've seen, you know, I've seen the like swipe to continue. So mm -hmm. didn't want to totally go down that road, but maybe it's like a, a next button, like a continue. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a back once we get to the next step. What do you think about that? That's pretty cool. I love that idea. If anybody in the chat wants to jump in around directions, maybe they've maybe they've just done a project. Um, yeah. Maybe they've just followed a recipe and are like, you know what? I just want to see them all out there because I I scan through all of it at once. Mm -hmm. I don't actually follow the steps. Let us know if you're one of those use cases. <laughs> That'd be super helpful. We love input from the chat. Absolutely. And once again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my little cheating screenshot trick. Just so I can see how much content we're working with here. Oh, there's the Discord. There's the Discord. This is Discord right there. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, Voodoo Val Ledge has dropped that link in the chat. Voodoo Val, clutch, most clutch mentor we got. She really is, though. <laughs> she really is. Big fan. Big fan. Shout out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cause I mean, quality. if you look at this, it's probably what two or three and you know what, maybe if we're just going to break these out, maybe we break the sentences out. Right. Mm. Cause we've got like heat the oil um, over medium in a large skillet, then add the bacon. Um, that's, that's to me one step. You know what I mean? It is, it is a step in itself when they're, when, you know, I think the, actually a paragraph um, steps, it's interesting. It's like, listen, I don't know what step one was of this paragraph. I gotta mm -hmm. go back. So this is kind of a cool way to kind of parse through it. Yeah, did the did the chat have anything to say about our uh, next and back buttons for directions? Did anyone have any really strong opinions? No, no, no strong opinions, but um, there was, Julia did comment around numbers, the numbers uh, on, Julie, I'm not really sure what you mean by this, but I'll read it out. Numbers on top centered for mobile. Hmm. Ah, so Julia might be thinking something like this. Hmm. 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 Let's play around with that and see. See what it looks like. So. And you can already see, I mean, and this is just without including her whole description. Um, you can see this is sort of where the fold is. So mm -hmm. we might not be able to see anything other than the one. The, the one, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of adding to two similar sized, uh, like second headers happening. There's the ingredients directions one. You know, it's, uh, it's very, Interesting. I like that. Yeah. I see that doodle. There's my doodle. That subtle doodle. And you know what? I went with the subtle doodle because that's what they have on the website. Mine's like a little bit less of a perfect circle. I'm thinking 
you know, if that's all we're going to see. Julia says lower. <laughs> love it. Love it. Julia. Love the, re love the real time. I love that you're yeah. here with us right now, Julia. <laughs> you know, as I'm looking at this, let's expand it. Okay. So we'll try that. And then, and this is what I often love to do is just pull a duplicate. So just hold down option, drag your screen over yeah. and then try it another way. Mm -hmm. See how you feel about it a different way. How Get easy it is. Oh, well, and then you can look at it side by side instead of having to like command Z and go backwards and see if something works. I think we'll shrink this down so it fits in that column. Maybe we'll shrink that font so it's maybe like a 30. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the simplicity of this, of the doodle really is, <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really digging it. I don't know if we're calling the doodle simplistic because it's um, my beautiful scribble or no, if we're not actually because commenting on the beauty, the beauty of Chrissy's simplicity the here. The beauty of using just a simple, simple doodle or line and what that will bring into a very, for the most part, rigid, pretty format, formatted to a grid type design. It's really, yeah. it's, it's really nice. All right. So chat, what do we think? Mm, okay. I would love to hear from like three top or side people. tops or side chat top what is directions, side directions. Let me know what you think. In the mm -hmm. meantime, in mm -hmm. the sake for the sake of, you know, you said maybe prototyping this down the road, which yeah, very on board with let's play around with it later. I think we should uh, at least put the second set of directions in there. Maybe we don't need all three. Maybe we just need enough to sort of prototype and play around with, but. Right, right. You could probably just use that same text for the moment. If you yeah, want. you know what? Let's let's roll with it for now. Yeah. I am um, unfortunately a proponent of actually making sure everything is Absolutely. accurate as I'm mocking up. But in the sake of time saving, let's go with that. And then as we wait for the chat, I think it might be a good time to sort of add some of these other features in, right? We've got a comment feature mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in here. Um, we've got a favorites already. So we added that at the top. Um, we have this send Chrissy a picture functionality, Ooh, which I think I really want to play around with. I um, like that. Yeah. I like it the centerpiece almost. Yeah. And you know, on the website, it's, it's almost like a Google form where you just fill out your name and then you upload the photo. But I think in the app, there's a really great opportunity to just grab your name from an account that you've already logged into and then send in that photo. And then maybe if you want to share a comment, you can. What do you think? I love that. I love that idea. Um, yeah. What if? What would that look like in your account? Would it, are we? Is it turning into almost like an Instagram, a food Instagram space Ooh, that only I Chrissy have Teigen? No clue. <laughs> I have. I no love clue. the idea of bringing it like a Chrissy Teigen only food Instagram space. So you, you too, you too can have your very own cravings. Yes. And you, um, yeah, that would be nice. We have a lot of feedback on side or top. Okay. We have but, we have over probably more than ten saying side. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. The people have spoken. Those people have spoken with side. <sighs> we hear you. We see you. We mm -hmm. love you. Mm -hmm. And, and we're listening. Time. We're just changing things for you. So, um, actually, as we're going to talk about sort of the commenting and the send Chrissy a photo. Um, you can see we've sort of got three different buttons going on here. This remove favorite, because it has a border on it, my guess is that on the back end, it's being treated as a secondary button. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got sort of a primary button here with, um, it looks like very subtly rounded corners and then, you know, a really round button. So I think we should maybe pick one style, either the round or like the subtle edge, and then we can make a primary and secondary button out of that. Um, what do you think, Alexis? Are you really going for like this square, you know, hard lined look or are you feeling the bubble? I'm, I'm always feeling, well, I guess it would have to do with placement. So if we are, let's, can we talk about placement for a second? Because yeah. I'm a big fan of the, the rounded bubble. If we're keeping it as a primary um, kind of action, like the big CTA for this, for mm -hmm. this page, um, mm -hmm. 
right? Because save is, is still secondary for this page in general. Yep. Um, I'm a fan of a bubble, to be fair, to, <laughs> to be honest. But, you know, I think I, I take I do take that back because looking at the app and looking what we're working with, right? They, she has all these styles on this site. How much has we, have we included on the actual mobile or the actual app version, I guess? Is, yeah. These are the yeah. things to think about. Not, I mean, we've, we've got some scribble action going on now, but really, I mean, we've got sort of this line action, we've got some favoriting, but I don't think we've really sort of fully grasped the personality mm. of Chrissy's site here. So I think we might some, want something with a little bit of personality. And in that case, maybe we want the bubble. Yeah, we have, we have, a uh, Paul, Paul may be backing me up with, with the rounded bubble corners. Yeah. We have one, one, uh, one comment. If anyone else in the chat is either really strongly opposed, please let us know. But, um, yeah, if that's our, if that's our primary, that's, maybe that's, that's maybe that's where we're showing personality. And I like the, I like that thinking around it. Yeah. So let's try, I mean, we can try the colors, the, the red that we've got going on here already. Um, but red can sometimes be really hard to design with because traditionally it's an error message. And, you know, sometimes people think that they shouldn't be clicking on it or that you're telling them to stop. Um, so that can sometimes be a challenge. So that's just something that I think we're going to have to keep in mind as we move forward with this. It's a really interesting point. I guess if it's here, that would be even more important than on her site. Mm -hmm. Right. Because on the site, you're just kind of reading through stuff or not really necessarily interacting with it. You're you're taking it in as a viewer mm -hmm. um, but then with the app. You're you're really engaging. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, like, what would what would it be then? What would that what would an error? I mean, right now we have no forms yeah. necessarily, so we don't have to really worry about that. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a I mean, one. maybe if something just doesn't load, you know what I mean? That mm -hmm. might be usually you get a little warning signal. Um, I don't know though. I mean, let's see. So I created an account for Cravings so I could play around with this. Um, and, you know, I did get an error uploading an image the first time. Uh, my image was too large. So mm -hmm. that might be something that we have to think about. Um, I don't know. Chat, what do you think? Do you think that, you know, red buttons traditionally signal an error message so we should avoid it and pick one of these other colors? Or do you think it's okay in this case? Let us know. And some verdicts back round, uh, Julia's round, saying round is friendly. It is friendly. And Julia likes the friendly rounds. Yeah, you know what? Let's go with it. Let's go with it. You know, if if Chrissy decides to bring me on board and have me design this app for her, you know what, then she and I can really hash this out. But somehow I doubt that she's in the chat. You have you have no idea. She could You're just right, be there. She could, she could just not have a Behance account and Maybe she can't really engage with the chat so much as maybe she wants to. Chrissy, you know it's what? okay. Just make it make a Behance account. Maybe she's watching on YouTube. You know what? That's what we should do, though. Right? Promote instead of spamming the chat with croissants. Maybe we spam the chat with like get Chrissy on Behance. Like maybe oh. we start a campaign. Wow! Wow! No one's wow. gonna want to do that. I suggested <laughs> it now, but it's fine. I th I th thought I'd throw it out there. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. So, you know what? Let's stick with these. I mean, did anyone really say that it seemed um, like a problem with the red or are we generally feeling okay about it? I think um, I think you have the consensus of in this case, it's okay. Um, I think it looks, you have a, you have a, Paul says, I think it, I think it is good. Great. Which, which is Thanks, the Paul. best way you can, it's the most clear way you can say something. And I love that. That's the best feedback I've gotten all day, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, seriously. Um, same. <laughs> so, so one other thought, right? We talked, you know, right before we hopped on the stream, Alexis and I had like a quick, you know, five minutes. What do we want to do today? How do we feel about this? And one of the things I know I said is that I want to make sure that we're promoting the comments or the rating or, you know, some sort of aspect that you just don't typically see um, in these, uh, you know, cooking apps, right? You know, I've got the New York Times cooking app. I've got all recipes and Sometimes people will comment on them, but I don't think it's, you know, really in the same way as um, something like this, where people are able to ask Chrissy for substitutions mm. um, as part of the app, like we talked about. So I want to make sure that we're promoting the comments portion of it, the sending in your photos and the just generally, you know, maybe rating the recipes. I don't know. What do you think? It's interesting. I like the idea of this com commenting or bringing all the comments and, and photo in photo and 
maybe, maybe these things don't necessarily live within the recipes anymore. Cause now you have a brand mm. new space. You have a whole new, a whole new space. Maybe you don't need to, you don't, know, you don't need to clutter the, the recipes anymore. Just like they're doing on the, on the website. Here we yes. are. Like if the whole point of the app is to engage with her community, spread the love. At least that's what I'm thinking. Chat, do you have any, any thoughts around community in this, in this app? Yeah. So in that case, um, Alexis, would you think, you know, maybe if we want to let people comment on the recipe still, maybe they're just hidden. Um, maybe you just have, um, a little comment section. I mean, let's see what they've got going on. Um, I think they have mm -hmm. a C comments. So if you want to, you can unroll that and dive right in. If not, we're just here to focus on the food. We love the food. We do love the food. So what do you think yeah. about that, Alexis? Yeah, do you think that's a good way to go? Yeah, let's do it. We can do a hidden. Let's do a hidden, a hidden comment section. Yeah. Kind so. of like ghosts of comments past. <laughs> I'm going to say send course to your pick because we got to make sure we have enough room in this button for the edges. Uh, but yeah, so see comments, send Chrissy your pick. Um, do we feel like we maybe need to add any um, photos? Do we think that's like a separate feed where people send in the photos? Like what maybe. happens once I send in my photo of miso pasta? Can I see it in the comments? Is that something? Is there like a users made this option? I don't know. Right. Or how will she find it if you, you know, maybe, and I love the idea of attaching on to the, on, on hashtags. I really, mm -hmm. she's really playing around with those a lot. And uh, so maybe something automatically gets tagged if you send it within this recipe. Like there it is the miso pasta, hashtag miso pasta recipe. <laughs> there you go. Um, and maybe that's how she finds it. Or maybe, you know, ends up in a feed and maybe that feed is 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 one of your is one of your menu options for the for the main Ooh. main app okay. i like that okay so i think maybe the only thing we're missing on this this recipe page and then we can think about what other pages exist would be those hashtags um and it looks like they've got them right up in the header with the spicy miso pasta um, but they're hidden on mobile do we feel like we want to bring them back on mobile do we feel like they purposely hid them and so that's, you know, it? Ah, they're down here. Mm -hmm. what, do, what, do, what do you think, Alexis? Where do you want to put them? I wonder what those, if those are actually clickable or if those are just recommendations. Um, you know, I have played around and I do know that they are clickable. Interesting. So does it bring you to a feed then? Do they, have they um, thought this through already? <laughs> there's like a, it's like the dinner hashtag. Yeah. So, you know, I think we talked mm. about either um, filtering by category or ingredients yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, but they've got hashtags as a filter. So you right. can click on miso and you know, maybe there's only two recipes, but they've all got miso in them. Um, you can click on creamy and you'll find all the creamy pasta recipes, pasta, spicy, all of those different ones. So that's how they're sort of sorting things. We opted to add the ingredients yesterday, mm -hmm. but they are actual clickable tags. So it sort of feels like they deserve a spot in here somewhere, right? I think they do, yeah. If that mm -hmm. is there, is that the, if that's the bread and butter, maybe it's an overlay on the image even, or maybe it's, mm -hmm. who knows, you know, there's, you do have some space here, but you also don't want to overcrowd it. I don't. And, you know, I think that for the most part, the recipes only have three or four tags. I don't think they've gone totally crazy, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know what? Let's play around with, this might be too light. Yeah. I just thought maybe we'd try like something that's a little bit see-through and then lay some hashtags on there just to see. Uh, Cornell has a really interesting comment around um, the comment section. <laughs> it's a comment about the comment. And I was talking about, um, I'd make two or three top comments visible to convince people to make that food. Yeah, you know what? I support that. That's pretty great. I support that. You know what, maybe, idea. maybe we just jump right in and do it, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? Let's try it. But before we it do it. It is missing from, from hers already. That is something that I do wish yeah. I could see. I know. So you know what, maybe we have just quick, I think maybe two. What, how do you feel about two? Yeah. Two, yeah. two and two positive comments, which is a whole nother. We want to keep it positive. A whole nother thing of being able to engage with positive comments only. Yeah, and you know what? If I had to take a guess, because I don't remember, 
But I would say that these, with the, the friendly bubble we've got going on, it feels like we should have circles for people's avatars, right? Absolutely. And you know, I'm gonna use a plugin called UI Faces. Um, and it's a great plugin. It'll basically just pull photos um, from any of these different sources. So you can pick Unsplash, Pexels, um, IMD, IMDB, which I didn't know that that was where it was pulling from. Maybe celebrities. That's amazing. Ooh, do you want to use that? She is a celebrity. Let's try it. So um, I'll select that as my source. And then I'm going to, instead of selecting photos, I love apply randomly. Let's mm -hmm. see who we get. Maybe like a Mel Gibson. How interesting. Oh, this is great. I'm not sure who these, I don't know who either of these people are and I feel like I should. Huh, okay. I well, know who either of these are celebrities or have been on IMDB, which doesn't necessarily mean you're a celebrity. No, but if you know who these people are, let us know because <laughs> yeah. I would love to know. I love it. The fanciest <laughs> avatars we can possibly find. Yeah, so let's call her um alexis after you oh we'll go there and then i'm flattered <laughs> how about paul for the other name because paul's I, he's the first person i see on the chat great paul you're part of the uh part of the part app of it now. now part of it now welcome yeah. <laughs> we've latched oh. you into this <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse paul is now part of our chat um okay yeah so made this for dinner last night. It was amazing. Uh-oh. I want to go back, yeah, hit and go back and select it as, right? Yep, hit that and there then we extend go. it. There you go. Oh, it's interesting. I think it like... <laughs> I think it decided like, that it that's what I wanted. <laughs> I think it maybe because you did it and then you did it again and... Ugh. It's a whole thing, but hey, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, short, XD. <laughs> short, short sentence. It's all, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. And you know what? Here's a, another question. Do we think it's important for, um, for a date or timestamp to be on this? Cause sometimes, you know, I don't think this happens as much with recipes, right? But sometimes you look at reviews for things and then you see that they're from two years ago. And mm -hmm. then you look at the reviews now and you're like, wait a minute, mm. that's just not true. I mean, that happened to me with my microwave. I purchased a new microwave because <laughs> I needed one. And I didn't look at any of the like reviews way down the page because I just let Home Depot sort by relevance. It oh, all wow. said they were great. Then I got my microwave and it was real loud. And I thought, hmm, it would have been really nice if the reviews mentioned this. So I went back, changed it to filter by date. And all of the reviews in the last year said whatever update to this microwave was made. Now it's loud. Oh, I guess I didn't realize that microwaves are updated that often. No idea. But that's that's something that, you know, really struck me as, well, I, I just never thought of that. Yeah, I definitely well commenting commenting and reviewing is so important to every to 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 most things you buy, right? And I think there definitely is a slight nuance that people have tapped into to make sure you don't see the uh, as negative, the negative comments. I've also seen some amazing, um, like the REI website has some amazing, um, amazing concept in there at the review with the review system. Um, yeah, it's definitely read my mind or like my dream journal because the REI website is my favorite website. I will oh, cite it good. as my example for design all the time. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, their, their review convention, convention, the reviewing convention is awesome um they do something pretty cool and chad if you've seen any ways that people review um products or or services and you've seen something that you're like you know this is really this is a really good way to review please let us know and i think someone actually did bring it up earlier um kendall said cool idea i picked up at a conference recently require users to rate a couple comments before they post their own has been shown oh. significantly significantly reduced trolling that's smart. I Such love a that. Idea. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's kind of where we're headed for a more, um, what is the word, um, with more equity amongst, amongst reviews, because a lot clout. of people, you could clout, you can also, you can, anybody can leave a review really. So it is good to know, you know, when, when they left the review, maybe how long they've used the product 
and then left the review mm. obviously and um uh yeah. reviews there's a whole science pound reviews and stars versus thumbs up and checks versus x's and is this helpful no this isn't helpful at all um it's a whole different it's a whole world um the review system it really is for yeah. a but for specifically for a recipe yeah do we need to know the the last time they made it do we need to know they um, they've cooked maybe how many recipes they've cooked as well? Ooh, maybe it's just because um, you know there's an option um, somewhere somewhere on the website. They've got an option to you know add things to your favorites, but then I think they also have a like I've made this, and that's mm. then when they encourage you to send Chrissy your picture. But maybe we just change this change this to I've made this. And mm. then people have the ability to sort of mark it as made or something like that. I don't know. What I do like you think, that. Alexis? I think that's great because theoretically, you know, we don't need to send it to, to Chrissy. You're no matter what this app is sending it to Chrissy, essentially. Yeah. Maybe this is your your one on one with with this chef of sorts, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. um so that information maybe isn't as necessary on an on, on this app, but I like that. I like that a lot. Cool. Okay, let's roll with that. Um, and I'm just double checking spacing. I mean, when we're on Adobe Live, it can be really difficult to pay attention to how far apart you have things, right? Um, Absolutely. But that's something along with grids that's super important just to make sure that you have things consistently spaced out so that it doesn't feel um, jarring as people are sort of moving through the app. It doesn't feel like something starts here and ends you know, way down the page. You wanna make sure everything feels consistent. And what is your pro tip when um, when spacing? Maybe when you do have the time to do it necessarily. Yeah, when I have the time to do it, um, I always like to work in eights. Mm -hmm. um, and so that might just be because I've worked on enough clients that have eights as their grid for the design system. Mm -hmm. um, but um, if I'm just doing it quick in XD, I'm trying to go by tens. Um, but yeah, I think eights really, it makes things really clean. Um, I mean, if you've got, you know, 16 pixels sort of between um, a header and some content. It's enough space, but it still feels connected. And then I like to go like 40 pixels below if you need like to start a new section mm -hmm. on a web page. I just think that feels like enough space and it's it's really breathable. It makes everything feel a little bit lighter and not as cramped. So if I have the time, I would work in eights. You would work in eights. Yeah. In a rush, we work in, work in tens. And maybe that's a good tip for just prototyping when something is, you know, um, Maybe when you don't necessarily need to, you just need to get an idea down. Mm -hmm. A way to practice um, working in spacing is just try try with tens to start. Yeah, try it. Well, and okay, so even you know, I just quick switched these from twenty to sixteen. So twenty feels a little bit off, but you can see if I drop it down to sixteen, they feel a little bit more connected. Yeah, right. Definitely. It's not a huge difference, but it is a little bit more intentional. And then here you've got thirty-two. You know that doesn't belong there. It's not a totally new section, so maybe we only need to do 24. Um, so they're a little bit more separate, but mm -hmm. they're not super connected. And you can see here, even if we go eight, then they sort of start to feel even more connected, but there's still some breathing room there. But yeah, just play around. I mean, there's nothing wrong with uh, correcting your own mistakes later on. Absolutely. I will say, though, it is important to, once you've created that, a good practice is to start um, applying that everywhere mm -hmm. right so you can play around with your sizing for days and there, you're right there isn't necessarily a right or wrong way but once you start creating screens after screen after screen that's when it's important to to really get down and nece it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be perfect that first screen but it kind of if you want it to keep consistent with the rest of your screens remember to remember to remind yourself to do that that's a hard one to to realize as you start as well that's, it's so difficult, but you know what? If you can think of it ahead of time and don't do what I've done and just sort of quickly put things together, it does it does make everything feel a little bit better. And I mean, you can just see, I just adjusted some of this, right? This is 40 pixels. You can see what I mean about, you know, actually identifying the space between those two. Um, you can tell that this is no longer connected with that. You could even go more. Um, I maybe wouldn't on mobile, but you could go a little bit taller if you wanted to. Um, this is 40 as well. You know, you can see that they're not connected with this space and it just feels a little bit better. 
<laughs> yeah, it really does. And like, it, it took you what, a mi- less than a minute to do all that. And it already looks more refined, more cohesive, more like something that can actually live. And um, is it's amazing how, how little time it took for you to just kind of get through that. So yeah, it's a big thing I definitely see with a lot of newer designers. And I can definitely look back at my work and be like, wow, what was I thinking with that spacing? Mm-hmm. It does set you apart. And it will be probably the biggest feedback you get when you're starting out. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, I remember when I first started designing, I wouldn't make sure that things were the same um, width and height down things. So like instead of, you know, taking this, putting it in the corner and going, okay, I'm going to go 10 pixels down, 10 pixels over. Uh I would just sort of shove things over. And then everyone was like, you know, maybe it would look better if it all went together. And I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> what making sure things are equal spacing is mm-hmm. important who knew it is it, it is. was a game changer game it changer for me it yeah. is a game changer um there's a lot of ways to practice that and it is just time time do it time doing it time spent with it yeah it's just one of those things that as soon as you've done it um once you're you're gonna see why everyone loves right. it you're gonna or, you're gonna get or it. you got called out on it that once that one time oh, yeah that's a good one. You know what? That's That's a good good way way to learn. learn. (laughs) It's a good way to learn. It really is. Um, But we are not, we are not like that. We are very, very, um, very nice and gentle with our beginning designers over in discord. We'll give it to you straight, but we'll also say some really nice things about you because we think very highly of you for just starting out. Uh, Let's see. I love, I love the idea of maybe like, I think later on we should definitely do like a chat Food functionality yeah. okay oh no i'm talking about like our chat like i think oh, okay. we're leaving let's leave our let's get our chat to do another um food food spam at some point i love it i'm telling you man leave all those croissants was that was amazing i i really want to know who started the croissant trend just because you know kudos kudos to you for getting that many people to participate Oh, amazing. Yes, exactly. So that's going to be us. Uh, Lindsay, Lindsay said it, it, um, it makes me breathe a sigh of relief to hear Brittany say that. And I think talking about um, spacing, our conversation about spacing. Hey. She, says, she says, I'm a weirdo who counts me- slash measures everything exactly. Lindsay, that is the only way I design. So I'm with you. Absolutely with you. So you know what I'm going to do? Let's just grab this all and move it over to this artboard. There. Look at that. Now everything just feels like it's even. It's the same as before. Everything is fine and dandy. Lindsay says, huzzah. (laughs) (laughs) Huzzah, Lindsay, huzzah. Looking real good, real sharp. Yeah, I'm digging it. And then you know what? We'll just quick delete, drag a new one over, and we'll just swap that to a two again. So again, we've got both. Cool. So that that's our recipe page. Wow. We are flying today. Looks great. Oh yeah. We are day two. Moving. Day two. It, day two moves. Yes. Day you one know, is is about, you know, just locking it in conceptually and just, you know, talking about it, which is important. Mm-hmm. Who is the, uh, where all the action happens. It's when you get it done, right? It's when you get everything done. So, um, Alexis, I think we could either, um, you know, I want to save some time for prototyping. So maybe, maybe in 15 minutes, we'll switch over to prototyping, but mm-hmm. I think we have time to create, you know, one more page, uh, whether that be, we can sort of pick from these. We've got sort of the read, which seems like it'd be similar to our recipe page. Mm-hmm. We've got the Ask Chrissy page. Um, so that might be a little more conversation. Um, and then we've got the watch, which is sort of the video section. We could also do something more along the lines of an account page. So we could you know, see what an account might look like on this page, what that profile might be for me. I don't know, what are you feeling? Oof, I love, I love, so that Q&A is fascinating to me. And is although it looks really interesting, um, I think a more important piece would be uh, going through the profile. Cool. You know, it's a big part of the experience. So yeah, uh, and profile is a big, a big thing. A lot of people design. So maybe it'd be great to see your process through that as well. Yeah, let's go for it. All right. So 
Paul, Paul is letting us know that the uh, ingredients line needs to be moved over. In the Ooh, thanks, Paul. Both of those. Paul, crushing it. So happens when your your name is tied into this project. So, I mean, I think He's Paul really feels a sense here. of connection to this exactly. project. Exactly right. That's that's how it happens. He's also making sure that if Chrissy's in the chat, um, you know, we're getting yeah. it right. Exactly. We're not making not making mistakes over here. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Uh, true shill, true shill. I don't know if I said that right. Profile would be better. And and then we have someone else saying, ask Chrissy, Chrissy would be interesting. Janessa, I, I agree, but I think it is interesting the way they formatted it, but it's, um, it's cool. I mean, let's cool. just take it's a second and look at yeah, it. Let's take a, a look at it. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got everything from, um, is there a specific brand of fish sauce you use? Um, to, I have a pork allergy. What's a good substitution for pancetta or prosciutto? Um, I will say, I know that when you click into these, you can see the full answer. So I do think oh, it's a little cool. bit weird that you can't see everything in here, but I also don't know maybe how else you would lay that out, right? You want to make sure that you're saving room for things and you can actually click in, but I don't know. That's it's interesting. an interesting one. Maybe as this project goes along, theoretically, if you know, if you want to expand on it, that's, this would be a really interesting space, a Q and A. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe in within an app also, because these are actual messaging icons, right? This is like a mess. They're formatting it as if you're texting with her. Yeah. So it'd be really cool to see that. But, um, but yeah, anyone else in the comments profile as Chrissy, I'm kind of, I'm, I really want to see profile personally. You know what? Let's, let's work on a profile. Um, and if a bunch of people are really feeling the ask Chrissy page, maybe we get to that when we're done, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we have time for both. I don't know. Yeah, see, it. We're, we've been flying. Let's keep we, flying. We are flying. Okay, so normally I would use the uh, UI um, Faces plugin, but I kind of want to grab Alexis, quote unquote, mm -hmm. again, seeing as we already used her. I love it. Did someone say who this person was in the chat? I thought I might have briefly caught it, I but I wasn't sure. I might have sure. caught that too. If anyone knows off the top of their head. Or if you commented it before and we totally missed it, mm -hmm. we're sorry. I've been really invested in the food happening. I know, I know. So, Don't worry, we're, we're still we're still with the food. There is always some food on screen at all times. There is yes. I mean, we're just gonna leave that in the corner while we design. Um, so we it seems to me that sort of what would be important in this section, and I'm I'm not designing. I'm just spitballing things to go out on the page right now. Um, so favorite recipes. Um, what else do you think would be really important to show on your profile? Um, maybe it would be interesting. Maybe, maybe food allergies, maybe favorite foods. I'm not sure. Something, something to help connect you with your cooking and the type of cook that you are. You know what? Maybe you can follow hashtags. Ooh, there you go. A following section. Cause you, anyone can, you know, add a favorite to the recipes, but since we've got hashtags, as our way to sort of identify things or categories, maybe we about that. Mm. Yes. Cool. That is, that, I think that's the bread and butter here. Cool. Okay. So I think there are a couple ways we could do this, right? We could either have sort of some squares and rectangles with photos of food. We could. Maybe we just have to have a couple a couple sections on this page, right? Um, and we could either divide those up like we did here horizontally with the ingredients and directions, or we could divide them up vertically. What are you feeling, Alexis? See, let's, I say like maybe we start horizontal. This is kind of a conversation we had yesterday around um, uh, what if they don't have that many recipes done, mm -hmm. right? What are we creating yes. for? So maybe, yeah. yeah. So maybe keeping it, um, you know, what would it look like with, at least with two? So maybe a mm -hmm. horizontal would look better. Um, actually, we have some really interesting ideas about what else to add. Great. Um, how about, oh, Voodoo Val, level of cooking skill, hobbyist, oh, seasoned difficult. chef. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Maybe like a badge system, right? Ooh, okay. So maybe, you know what, I think we might need a bio first and foremost, mm -hmm. right? Give mm -hmm. people the option to tell us if they are a pro or novice cooker. Um, let's see, um, self, I self proclaimed decent chef. <laughs> Perfect. 
great copy. <laughs> this sounds like what I would uh, write for myself, to be totally honest. Oh, I think it's right. something that they, their their team would be okay with, actually. Great. It does sound like a Chrissy Teigen vibe. She's very approachable as a cook. That seems like something she'd say. Yeah, I feel like that's her vibe. Also, I just want to quick call out. Once again, quickly adjusted everything. So we've got 40 pixels, 24, 12. Look at that. Wow. Wow. That was, that was not nearly as painful as, you know, we thought it was going to be. What a pro. Yeah. So we can, you know, and this, this I think is the time where maybe let's add some lorem ipsum. You know, I know we talked about pros and cons, but I'm all right using lorem ipsum as long as you know roughly how long um, the page should be, right? Do you know lorem ipsum by heart? Um, I only know that much. That's as far as I got. But wow, that was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. I'm sure there's, there's a plug-in, right, for lorem ipsum, I'm right? Sure, I'm so I'm sure, sure yeah. it exists. But. but you were just typing out lorem. I'm sure some of, uh, I, people can do it. I've just never seen it and definitely haven't seen it live. So oh, well, there we go. That's all I got though. So <laughs> don't expect anything more than that. But yeah, I think as long as you roughly know how long um, your content needs to be, it's okay to use lorem ipsum, right? Yeah. Um, in this case, we would be limiting it to only three lines of content, right? We want to make sure that we're not um, writing something really short or something really long, and then we have to adjust for it later on. Right, so right. I think we're okay to just crunch it down for a minute. I think you um, are good. Cool. So then let's see. Um, we've got favorite recipes, following feed badges. So favorite recipes, you know what? Maybe we just showcase the photos of the food in here. What do you think of that? It's crush. That's it. That sounds like what we've been waiting for the whole time. Just more right, like in, instead of, you know, actually, and see, this is why we turn the grid on. Look at that. Mm -hmm. um, instead of actually having to um, name things. I think it's awesome if we can just show the photos and then maybe that's what draws people's attention anyway, right? Like eat the food with your eyes. The picture mm -hmm. tells a thousand words. It sure does. It sure does. Cool. So let's find my Chrissy Cravings photos to pull on in here. We'll drop in the hot dog. Oh, cornbread, actually. That cornbread, cornbread skillet is phenomenal. Cannot Did you make recommend her? enough. Have you made that one? I have not, but one of my old roommates is a um, huge Chrissy fan. Kat, if you're in the chat, say hi. Um, but she makes pretty much everything in those recipes. She's baked the whole cookbooks like front to back multiple wow. times over. And so she made the cornbread skillet and I just ate it. I had zero participation in actually cooking, but oh, it was good. It was real good. Ugh. Speaking of good foods, let's, you know what? It's, it's that time of the chat. We're all a little hungry. Everyone post your favorite food emoji. I want to see it. Yes. I want to see it too. I really want to see it. I've been, I've been sitting on this for a moment, but I'm, I'm excited to see. You know what? I'm what glad that you've been sitting on it. I've been sitting on it. <laughs> what is your favorite food emoji as we're doing this? You know what I, I was thinking just now as um, I'm looking at this, you know what would be nice here maybe is like a... Maybe we just preview three things, you know, for those people that you said might not have mm -hmm. um, all these recipes that a they've recipe. made. Maybe mm -hmm. we just show, and then we have like a see all option. How do you feel about that? Love it. Love it. Great. Great. You know, I am so guilty of letting go of the option button before I've actually <laughs> finished copying what I'm trying to copy. I've seen that. I've seen that a couple times at the uh, Whoops. Slight, slight slip of the hand. But you it's know what? You hand. know the first line of Lorem Ipsum by heart. I think like those two things counter out, uh, you know, they balance each other out, I think, 100%. There we go. Okay, so here's a new question for the chat. We've got red as headers. We've got red as numbers. We've got red as buttons. Is it too much to go for red as like a link text as well? Are you actually going to know that that's um, yeah. a button or a link? You know what I mean, and we can maybe add one of those. And, you know, if I had more time, uh, we would maybe add in an icon with the actual arrow over there. But I'm kind of wondering if 
having it in red is, you know, continuous and it makes sense to everyone. Or if it's sort of a, wait a minute, I have a header and a call to action happening right there next to each other. Interesting. Interesting dilemma. Think? Interesting dilemma. I feel like um, the C, so, you know, the, you, you have the see all as a descriptor, which is mm -hmm. typically, you know, if you don't have the color or the icon, you have the words. Yep. Um, and you're right about, you're right about the red text. And we talked about it briefly at the front. Um, and maybe, so maybe the, you know, new indicator color for this specific app is, is something completely different. Maybe it is that green or blue or a peach, maybe. Yeah, peach is gonna be hard to read, actually, I take it back. But um, how do we feel about that light teal? Super interesting. That blue. Is that font the actual? Is that a a linked like font? Like is that a not? I know that font is uh, one of our fonts, but is that font normally used for? Let's um, double check. Yeah. And that's the beauty of using these things. So usually when things are just in buttons, uh, we've got that. But it does look like we've got that bison in as the remove favorite, or maybe you know what? That's I bet you that's Proxima Nova uppercase mm -hmm. and bold. So let's try that and see if that makes it feel better yeah because it's almost like whatever color we do apply it's still a little bit harder to see mm -hmm. so yes julia is like yelling out green um some confusion around orange actually some confusion about the color earlier is it red or is it orange it's like a coral red orange i think coral is a good way to describe it because i wouldn't go full red it's got some orange tints in there but it's definitely not just a red or an orange it's definitely sort of more not. of a coral I think that's a great, great way to call it. So yeah. it looks like we've got some different hashtags there. It looks like they're probably in our Proxima Nova font, but we don't really have a color for those too. So again, I guess, again, we're going to raise the question, you know, what makes the most sense for making those seem clickable? Mm. If we've got red headers here, it seems a little weird to have red below, but it doesn't also feel great to have the, the green or the blue. Yeah, the green isn't uh, isn't necessarily doing it for me. Someone did say, yeah, Mark Mac does say, yeah, it seems like a lot of the same color or seems a lot of one color. Mm -hmm. So we are probably switching up the color. The question here is which color? Yeah. Um, what does that pink look like? More of that pink. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's another thing that's a little, once you get into that space a little bit smaller, it's kind of hard to read, so. Yep. Well, and I, I don't know for sure, we could check in Stark, but I have a, a guess that that pink on this gray is not accessible. And uh, while, you're, while you're moving some colors around, uh, I'm just gonna shout yeah. out some awesome emojis. I mean, this is- What emojis we got? We have sushi, we have dumplings, we have bacon. Good job, guys. A chicken leg, ice cream. Uh, yeah. A bento box, which I do love that there's an emoji for a bento box. Yep. And then there's sushi. You know, we have got um those are some really good like favorite fruit emojis. I think mm -hmm. mine's like the pizza. I really like the pizza because I think it's just a really nice looking emoji. It actually <laughs> is. I've seen really it used for a lot. Like it just it just feels very punctual. It does. It's yeah. like pizza, you know, period. Pizza. That's the pizza. Cool. Okay, so you know, I see um Mar says green looks good. Why don't we stick with that for right now? How's that sound? Yep, I think um, green does look good. And then what's your thought on these sort of hashtags? Do we leave them as hashtags? Do we style them out in a different way? I don't think the black is really working for me. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know, maybe it's something like miso, pasta, spicy, and maybe it shows like the number of things in that hashtag. I don't know, what do you think? What feels better? Well, let's see. Like, so we are going to, so, you know, this is interesting. This is interesting. This is this hashtag convention is kind of throwing me off, but. Um, it is. It's a really easy way to, you know, find things when you think about it, but. I like the idea of it being kind of listed the way it was to be right. Because you know what? It's, it's supposed to be a hodgepodge. It's supposed to be kind of this culminating hashtag. Like these are all the things I. I love like hashtag miso, hashtag pasta, hashtag pizza emoji, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a hodgepodge. 
you know, the black isn't cutting it, but they do, I think I saw another way they used it. It was, it is just, it's the same color. So it, but it is a different font. So maybe it is the same color. I know it's, it's strange, but I almost feel like it's as it's, no. And that, you know, what might do it for me is if we yeah. switched the location go. of these and maybe, I mean, I think following is a great, um, header but maybe we think of a more subtle way to you know list that yeah um julia's saying maybe hashtag not bold <laughs> which i love that it's you commented hashtag not bold all right that Let's helps try a little that. yeah i think that feels better and then you know as we add you know what i'm gonna repeat grid um as we add things below it um, I think we'll feel a little more comfortable because then we're not going from imagery to words to imagery to words. And then what would we call the section? You know, I'm a big fan of taxonomy. So what would we want to call the section um, that's either her feed or what she's made or recipes like that or her photos? Maybe it is just a feed. What I've made even maybe or my my recipe. Um... My hmm. creations, my my food, my attempts. Yesterday we were talking about like burnt my and unburnt. Meals. Oh, yeah, I love burnt and unburnt. Uh, successes, success story. <laughs> successes yeah, it's a real, it's a real thing of cooking. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a part of it, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so let's pull in. Robert says, hashtags light gray. Hmm. Ooh. Interesting. And now, Voodoo Val confirms my meals or says, you know, maybe my meals. Awesome. Love it. Love when cool. we have confirmation through the chat. I know. I just like to feel um, like our ideas are validated, chat. So I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these these are all photos courtesy of uh, my, my friend Kat. Love it. There you go. Really wow. getting the, the Chrissy cookbook and the food in that shot. I mean... Mm. important Ooh, cornell threw threw one out my cookbook Ooh, i oh. like that because you know what that, that just sweet. feels yeah that just feels right yep something about that feels good all right well, we're at a we're at about 10 minutes so maybe if you want, you know we you know when we might be able to come back after the design feedback um yeah maybe do some prototyping, but if you want to get into that and that would be a good time. And I recommend anybody who's working on their creative challenges from yesterday, at least drop them in the discord, send them over to us. We'd love to see them. Um, okay, cool. So let's, let's hop into prototyping. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about slash showcase is, um, sort of XD's ability to, um, fix things to the uh, artboard so that you don't have to, um, you know, add something or move into another tool. You know, you can just drop that right over, um, select fix position when scrolling. Um, and then when you actually preview it, you can see it. You don't have to change anything. You've got the navigation right there mm -hmm. and you're all good to go. So I'm gonna add one or two more quick images in here just so we can see what it looks like. And again, just using repeat grid. Um, so we making sure we've got 24. Yeah, we got 24 pixels of space between them. Makes it a piece of cake on my end. Um, yeah. And then we can start hooking some stuff up. It's so funny when you open those, it's like, boom, hot dog every time. <laughs> I know. You think I would remember that um, <laughs> the hot dog was first, but I really should have named them. But, you know, I pulled everything in from um, Adobe Stock and mm -hmm. all the photos were just so good that I was like, I'm going to let them speak for themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, that's, that's where I'm at. But you know what? I realized we probably need a photo of our little pasta friend in here. If we're gonna be clicking into the spicy miso pasta, you gotta have somewhere to go. Perfect. Look at that. 
Gotta love that repeat grid as well, right? Talk about um, setting up your your spacing early and just mm -hmm. copying it over and over again, making sure it just is right once. And oh yeah, boom. 100%. So we're gonna hop into prototyping mode uh, and we'll go. Mm -hmm. So we'll hook up to the recipe, we'll hook up this to this screen. Yep, so Brittany's just in prototyping, the prototyping tab. Yeah, so we switched from design to prototype. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. It's one of my favorite parts of XD actually is prototyping mm -hmm. um, because it is so simple. And I've used a lot of different prototyping tools and I have not come across something so quick, so quickly, so quick, something I can use so quickly. Yes, absolutely, okay. So as we're quickly looking at this, I think Paul was trying to tell me that I needed to switch this one as well um, over to directions. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm looking at this, I realized I'm gonna need a next button for directions. So I'm gonna quick hop back into design and I'm going to actually just drag in the components that I made for the buttons. Um, and I just did that by um, grouping everything and then selecting the plus button and the components over there so you could quickly see um, sort of all your different components if you're going to reuse them. So I think in this case, we'll put the secondary button on the left. Um, and then this one on the right will be next. But since there's not a previous on this screen, we won't need those there. It's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, Julia says everything is becoming very easy. Yeah, that's what happens when you have components set up and repeat grids happening and it's it a lot of work up front, just, fast. yeah, a lot of work up front, but then it just happens, comes together very quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's like what you were saying yesterday, um, too, even with just getting set up um, with everything yesterday, we spent a little bit more time, we moved a little bit slower, just trying to sort of talk through everything and actually think about all of our options before we just did something. Um, and now that we sort of know what our vibe is, we know what we're going for, it's just a lot faster. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Okay, so we just spaced those so they're 24. Um, and then this will be 40. And I love that XD shows you how far the spacing is without even, you know, having to ask for it. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, it just kind of comes up to uh, to really to looking good and look good in the comment comments <laughs> mm -hmm. in the chat comments looks looks good and looking good hey i love it go cool Boom. so you can see um i selected you know this actual spicy miso pasta recipe kicking it over to this screen um, and then we selected ingredients so if you swipe um, from one of these um well, we can do drag, drag. then mm -hmm. to our directions um, and then here, when you tap on next, it will take us over to the next one. Mm. So let's just let's see, see what that looks like. So you can see we've got our Chrissy Teigen app. Now, I just want to call out, we've got this blue bar up top. Um, and that's so when we export it to actually um, work for an iPhone 10, we will still have the status bar, everything up there, and it won't be in the way. Uh, we talked a lot about that yesterday. That's also why there's a bunch of space below this so that it doesn't get rid of the homepage indicator. Um, so we just really wanted to make sure that we're creating some space. So it might look a little bit funky as we look at the prototype, but if we were to export this and you know actually develop this, it would look completely perfect. Mm -hmm. Cool, and so you can see how that footer is sticking to the bottom. Um, if I click into that there space in this pasta, we have the automatic transition. And if I drag, oh, Maybe you have to hit the line as the thing that drag actually. Uh oh. Oops. Or you can maybe pl uh, take directions because maybe if you tap directions, it can bring you over to the second page. Yep. Let's do that. that. Might be a one. Let's do that. And so we'll just quickly delete that, zoom on in, grab directions, and take us to the next page. And so. theoretically, there is a well. There is a way to actually drag, drag the entire text blurb over. Yeah. Um, Howard Pinsky has some really cool tutorials about how to do that on letsxd.com.com. Yes. And um, 
So you can actually get into that, but this is a really quick way to do it as well. Auto animate is going to just animate that line over for you. Just mm -hmm. like that. So and that looked really nice. It looked Let's really good. Yeah. And so then when yeah. we switch to the ingredients too. Yeah. And there's more things you can play around with too, right? Um, right. If you look exactly. at the prototyping panel, we've got all sorts of options, right? So we've got um, a dissolve animation. We can add preserve scroll position so that what just happened doesn't happen the next time we do it. So you can see when we go back to prototype and then we hit next, it keeps you where you were and just moves mm -hmm. to the next category. So there are so many fun things to play around with in terms really of interaction cool. here. I just wanted to take a minute and, you know, hop through it and take a look at it because sometimes we can get so caught up in designing things to, you know, move statically or just one screen to the next that we don't really think about everything that we're doing from, you know, an interactive standpoint. And I think that's mm -hmm. so important. It's pretty cool. I mean, and there's also, you know, voice is, a, is, is more of the, one of the newer features for prototyping. And I just thought like, what is that with, how would that work with a recipe app? And how many times are you, are your hands dirty while you're making something like voice would be perfect for something mm -hmm. um, like a recipe app or a cooking app. Um, yeah. I mean, let's um, try it. Ooh, ooh I let's, love it. Let's, let's just, ooh, let's don't. just show it and see how it works. She's fearless. She's fearless people. Yeah. If it doesn't work, let's not blame me. Um, <laughs> so I've got, um, I switched from trap to voice. Um, the command is next. Um, I'm going to preserve the scroll position and then we've got the using and all that. So let's see what happens when I hit next. Oh, Adobe does want access. That's fine. Next. Maybe not. Next. Is it on the right page? It is. Hmm. You know what? Maybe let's try one more. Next. Boom. Boom. There, it, there is. it is. You know what? I think Mic it did drop. it the first time as soon as I gave it the uh, access to the microphone, but we just didn't it did notice. it too well. It did it too well. That's oh, and that's why you want to make sure that, you know, I know we tried to save some time by uh, keeping this content the same, but it's pretty hard to tell there when it go. switches mm. over. That's, that's absolutely, you're right. You're so but, right. But you know what? I think all in all, we, we've got a ton done today. I mean, look at this. We've got our home. That looks pretty great. We've got the ingredients. We've got some comments. Um, you know, the only thing, if we have some more time, maybe we want to pick out some icons for these. And maybe... I think we'll have plenty of time to do that, actually. Um, right. Because that, and that sounds like, I mean, that's just fun. That, that's what everyone wants, right? And you know what? I think Chrissy probably would want, you know, I picked out some icons, right? But I think some sort of, you know, colorful styling with them, maybe just not, you know, either blue or gray or red or gray, maybe like a half illustrated version of it, right? Where you've got like some of the edges are in one color. You've got a little bit of a filled in scribbly look. I don't know. That could be kind of fun. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah, we're, we're coming up on a daily creative challenge. Reviews we are, day. we are, we're coming up pretty soon. So if anybody is working on there still, um, which that's okay. If you are, if you um, are totally fine, totally fine. From yesterday, yesterday, Andrea Hawk worked with, let's see, what was the creative challenge yesterday? Pretty sure it was location indicators. Um, and if we can't, if, you know, maybe we don't have any of those, we'll look at some past challenges. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just take a look what we got yeah yeah you man you got through some good stuff though oh look yeah perfect change that change that copy yeah yep. I'm just thinking you know what if we're gonna hop back into it later and playing around with uh the voice we might as well know when it switches pages <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah I mean I, that voice it's so smooth it does work it's funny how well it works and uh, I'm glad you used it. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite features in XD. It's just something that you can't really do with a lot of other uh, prototyping tools. And so I think it is a really great way to showcase, you know, another form of um, your creative prowess. Yeah, and especially nowadays with a lot of conventions changing, a lot of things happening in the world, 
voice is going to be at the forefront of a lot of things. So it's here to stay. It is here to stay. All right. So it's about time. It's about that time, people. Awesome. Let's We're get take a look. Get Let's see what we got. Let us see what we got here. See if I can. Hmm. All righty. I am. Oh. So let's see here. So let's see if we have any from today kind of coming in last minute. Okay, we'll just, uh, let's just jump into this one. Cool. All what are we ready? So it looks like we have a, a summer menu. I'm not oh. sure. If, I, don't, I don't think this was the most current, but that's okay. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Totally fine. Yeah. So let's see. It looks like we've got, you know, three different sizes. Um, is it desktop, tablet, mobile? Is that what we're looking at? I think that's what we're looking at here. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So. Well, I mean, talk about food. <laughs> I know. I, I think that this was a great pick. Um, you know, obviously we've got some food. I love the colors on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I love that sort of like warm. It's not quite pink. I don't know what color I would call it. It's not quite a mauve either, but it's somewhere in between like a purple, pink, mauve color. I love it though. I think it's great. Um, I think for whatever reason, it makes me hungry. You know, I've heard that red makes people hungry and that's why so many fast food chains have um, red as their brand colors. So right. I think this one has like a subtle nod to it. It is. It's almost like a, it's, it's using those same color, color theories, but like, adding like the millennium to it. Yes. <laughs> um, the only thing I'm noticing just as I'm looking is um, that green. That green on white is a little bit hard to read as text, mm -hmm. but I love it as a color element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. That back, using it as a background actually is a, a background element for your illustrations actually really works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that this on, but text hard to read. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But I love the, um, the illustrations mm -hmm. going on there. Yeah. And your imagery is pretty cool too. Some mm -hmm. cool avocado avocado toast. Yeah. The only other thing I might say is maybe make that get a discount button bigger. I mean, I feel like we can we can really see the menu, but if it's 10% off, I want to know how I get 10% off. Mm, I love it. Yeah. But the colors, this whole the food and the whole thing is working for me. It's it it's really good. It is working. I'm gonna try to um see if we can oh, no, still known from today. Day. let's try to go let's go back a little bit into the discord let's do it and check out if there are some projects that be fun to see um and also just quick perfect i'm also going to share um i want to be able to share my behance let me just make sure i'm sharing the right screen make sure it's okay to do that tech person in my head I'm going to share um, Safari instead of um, the ants. Cool. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Great. There's just a little, uh, you know, tech God in my head. Uh, no big deal. All right, here we go. Got it. Cool. <laughs> so nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, cool. So this is a past challenge um, and we are checking it out. We're checking out the Behance case study of it. Oh my gosh. Cool. So much food relevance. I love this. I love food. Oh, I love food too. Oh, uh, this is cool. I this like is a good this. One. I love this a lot. I mm. love that like the toppings are falling onto it. I love that it's, um, you know, still got some illustration. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, I'm, I'm digging that. I'm digging this logo even. That's pretty creative. Talk about the pizza emoji in like a minimalist <laughs> way. And I also love that even like on top of it, they've still layered some of those pieces. I feel like it's probably basil. And then mm -hmm. like a, a pepper mm -hmm. that they've got layered on top of it. It just, it makes it feel fun and you can see the shadow on it too. So it's not just like another element layered there. It really feels like it's 3D and it's popping right up. Yeah. I you know it's like, it's, it's kind of like a uh, mock of the future, right? It's like, you know what? There is no screen it lives on. It just kind yes. of lives in this red void of pizza, pizza yes. sauce. I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. All right, let's check this out. So we go veggie, we have pepperoni. Oh, that's very mm. cool. I will say, I do like I do like their, their copy around create yours. Mm -hmm. Pretty cute. I like that. Um, 
a little bit more maybe of a directive. Am I making, I'm, I'm obviously I'm making a pizza, um, but am I making my order? Am I making, am I making the pizza? Did I even get yeah. that right? So maybe a little bit more direction there. Yeah. And, um, looks like your search is a little, little tight, a little squeezed. Yeah. Maybe just give it a little bit of breathing room and then. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, and maybe it's farther down the line. What does that search look like when it's expanded? Yeah. Right? Does it slide everything it. over? Um, yeah. I'd just be curious. It would be. Yeah. I'm trying to see if maybe it, like it, they have included something. Mm, um, so yeah. Because every see how you build it. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. You add the ingredients and then they like appear. That's really cool. Oh man. That is neat. Yeah. It's interesting. It's you give it a lot of you have a lot of breathing room all throughout your design, except for that uh, search. So just get back in there. Yeah. All right. Cool. Pizza. Delicious. Not starving at all. No, no, I'm not, <laughs> not hungry. A, not at all hungry I haven't now. been looking at food for the last two and a half hours. <laughs> all right. We're going, uh, we're, we have another, uh, it's another pizza app, which I'm. This so must've okay been the challenge. <laughs> this right? has to have been the challenge of food. I think this is more appropriate actually to review on your on your stream than uh, than the location indicator. So this is working out great. Absolutely. I'm wondering if this is it is it's an interactive prototype, which is very cool, which you can share through XD. Awesome! I awesome. love it. So we have deals, pizzas. Can we do anything else? Oh, we can add. Awesome. Oh, cool. cool. Can we do anything else? Oh, maybe I want two margarita pizzas. Yeah, you do. Oh, I want three actually. Excellent. <laughs> So that's, that's pretty cool. cool. I wonder if I can do any more actions. Yeah, I can ooh, change the size. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. And then the price. This is changes. someone that's taken the time to prototype all of these different screens and all of these pages. No, and I love that. We oh. didn't have enough time for it today, but man, kudos to you. This is a lot of work. It is. It sure is. I wonder if this will go back to deals. Anything else we can click? Nope. Very cool. Okay, so do we have any uh, feedback? right off the bat with their kind of your entry into this um, build your own pizza module? Yeah, I think um, maybe that type delivery location um, should just be bigger. Um, or maybe mm -hmm. you slide it right under uh, the pizza is next level cheese, which I love <laughs> as copy. But yeah, I think if you maybe slid like it under it there, right mm -hmm. yeah, just then it would feel like it's connected and it would just sort of feel a little bit more obvious. Um, because if I hadn't scrolled through the whole page, I would have just looked at this delicious pizza and the sort of graphic and then the text and then moved on and gone to look back up at the navigation. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Yeah, that's what you want. You want people to be able to get this pizza delivered. Yeah, why hide it down here? Mm -hmm. I will say, how's the color on your on your eyes right now? Because this is a very... Do you know when um you add when you have two different colors like a white or a very intense pink or green, and mm -hmm. you put them next to each other? Do your eyes start to wobble a bit? Um, uh, every once in a while, yeah. So I think I'm trying to think of what you could do here, just um because I love the background color. I love the bold. We've mm -hmm. been talking about mm -hmm. going bold, going bright all day. Um, but maybe that's you know, the top half of the page or it's the navigation plus a little bit more space or something. And then maybe it switches to white on black. But I think really I'm just fixated on, maybe my eyes aren't wobbling so much on that header, but I'm really fixated on being able to see that um, delivery mm -hmm. location yes, absolutely. better. And so I don't know if, you know, making it bolder would be um, more helpful, but I do think that's sort of where I'm getting stuck seeing things. Got it. Yeah. yeah how agree. about you? I agree. I agree. I think that is definitely the, the most, one of the most important things on your platform, on your page right now. So yes, absolutely. As much as I do want to see this pizza and as much as I, I want to see the pizza is next level cheese, uh, in order for you to get any customers, you have to make sure you can get people their pizza. So yeah, I agree. Pull that up. Maybe it's two buttons. Maybe it's um, delivery location or like start my order. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think maybe a lot of times when I'm looking up restaurants, I've already determined that I'm within their delivery location. Mm -hmm. So I know that I can order. So I just, I'm ready to order. I'm ready to go. So maybe giving people the option to just start their order. And then even if it just takes them to the pizza slide, 
um, or tab, then at least they're moving through the process and they are not trying to figure out how to begin that order. Absolutely. And you know, you, you did such a great job um, prototyping. You know, it might be fun to prototype the uh, the pizza or in some way. Maybe this, you know, maybe bring it slides on in. It already kind of makes me feel Ooh. like it's about to. Like, um, let's animate the pizza. I love yeah, it. The pizza, why not? Because you yeah. did put a lot of time in sizing and pricing, which I appreciate. I do. Yeah. Um, it might yeah. be fun to add Adding some. things in there. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. I love it. Any any words around the um, part uh, UI here? The Let's see. You know, I like that we've split things between, you know, popular pizzas and specialty pizzas. Um, I'm thinking we maybe... Um, Maybe we need to bump up the font on the size um, so people can see it um, mm -hmm. a little bit better because, you know, I can see it, but I could see needing less space maybe for the checkout and more space for the pizza. So maybe it's just, it looks like it's almost two thirds a third. Maybe you go completely for the two thirds a third or, you know, three quarters, one quarter. You slide over the cart a little bit more just so people can, you know, see the rest of the pizzas. Um, and then if someone hasn't placed an order, you don't have a big blank spot on the screen. You agree. Yeah. And maybe, maybe label it cart. I mean, I know that I've added it, but let's make sure I know exactly what I'm looking for. Cause we got pizzas on the left when we've got farmhouse pizza and farmhouse pizza. So maybe just give me a signal that that's what I've put in my shopping cart. So I'm sure. I agree. I agree. All right, let's uh, let's take um, uh, one more. Let's take one more challenge out of the Discord. One of the older challenges. And we're gonna change it up. We're gonna go from pizza to a head to head battle between Ooh. wolves and rhinos. <laughs> because okay. because let's just why not? It's fun. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so let's see here. Okay, I'm not really. Yeah, let's just try to see if we can guess kind of what this challenge was. <laughs> okay, so it looks, my guess is that um, you've got two different things and you have to create maybe some sort of voting system. Because mm -hmm. um, it looks like, you know, people are able to vote. It looks like we've only got, maybe we have more than two teams. I'm not really sure what those tab indicators would go to. Maybe there's more down below. Yeah, this is just, uh, this is the next screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see, we've got scene, valuations, feedback, and followers. Yeah, so it, my guess, mm -hmm. so, you know, we used to do these sort of things um, almost with like blood drive battles and, you know, whoever donates more blood, you know, you move <laughs> forward or backwards. Um, so I wonder if it's similar, if there's like some sort of external component added to that, or if it's just strictly, you know, we're doing a head-to-head -head battle and we're voting, um, you know, which team which animal we which like animal more. yeah um Love yeah the maybe <laughs> yeah that's so cool yes the style itself we can talk a little bit about that we have a lot of gradients happening a lot of gradients going on we have mm -hmm. i'm not really i'm still not really sure i'm assuming the one you voted on is wolves um, yeah you know what it looks like to me is that you've got a hover state going on there so if you hover mm -hmm. over the vote um mm -hmm. it maybe you know amplifies sort of that shadow Yep, that's a really good call. Yeah. yeah some type of bracketing um, mm -hmm. fun game. Uh, I love the styling of the buttons. You almost never yeah. see that where it's like a full, uh, what is it, parallelogram? <laughs> where yeah. you have different um, angles on the side. So it's not just your typical rectangular button, but it still is. Um, it's not, you know, a bubble. So it's just, it's really different and it's really unique and I like it a lot. Yeah, very gamer. Very mm -hmm. gamer centric and focused, and uh, it's I see you have that like twitch purple happening in the back. Mm -hmm. um, very yeah. fun, very fun, very much appreciate um, your your kind of brain and your really playful elements. Like you can see the wolf background, yeah, <laughs> like in the it's background. Cool. It's very fun. It, it works with maybe what if what you're designing um, this voting app uh, bracket fun game system. So good work. Yeah, I like cool. it. The one thing we talked about yesterday is maybe giving some context to Behance projects. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that people know yeah. what the challenge was. Um, we can see that it's head to head battles, but you know, is there a sentence or two that you can grab from the daily creative challenge of when it was originally posted? Right. So you know, um, or so viewers know what exactly they're looking at because 
head to head battles are awesome, but I want to know how you pick wolves and rhinos. Like, I want to know if you did those illustrations. I want to know if, you know, everyone created a wolves versus rhinos. In Mm -hmm. that case, how did we pit them against each other? So I just want a little bit of background information so that, you know, I can properly recognize, you know, the work that you've put in. Really great example of setting up that case study. This is a perfect case study where it's like, we're not sure. A lot of different contexts, fields, a lot of different things to take into consideration would really help us if you guided us a bit more. Um, Some are a little bit more straightforward. Obviously, if you're making a pizza making app, that's way more straightforward than a rhinos versus wolves. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Exciting um, game. So I think um, I think that's kind of what can call it quits with the DCCs for the moment. You guys, you know, there is one coming up today after the stream with Andrea Hawk again. And hopefully you guys can get yours in for uh, tomorrow for tomorrow's stream. Um, Yeah. And so we have some time if you want to kind of maybe walk us through the end of the app, or maybe we can figure out those, um, those icons. That might be fun. Yeah. Let's figure out the icons and then, you know, we'll see, we'll see what time we've got left. How's that sound? I love it. We're, we're coming up. Uh, we have about a little less than 10 minutes. So I think we can pick icons in 10 minutes. I think so too. Um, okay. So. Um, we need icons for, um, let's see, what did we call them? We have cravings, read, watch, ask, and you. And so what I'm going to do before we do anything, um, I pulled this in from the UI kit um, that you get um, from right from Sketch. Um, so I pulled the Apple UI kit in. And so what I'm going to do is right click on this um, and hit edit master component because I added it to my components. And we'll pull this guy all the way over to where our icons are hanging out so that it's a little bit easier for us to edit things. And then it will automatically update everything on the page. So anywhere that this component exists, it will automatically um, update as we move. Amazing. So fast. What a shortcut. What a shortcut. Okay. So um, I think some of these are more straightforward. So maybe let's start with those. Um, I think the cravings one, there's going to be some hot debate. So if you have an emoji um, that you think would be great for the cravings, homepage, um, navigation, whatever you want to call this, um, if you have an emoji that you love, drop it in the chat and Behance, and I will do my darndest to find a similar icon in here. Absolutely. So yes. if you've got, even if it's the croissant emoji, if that's where we land, that's fine. I'm on board with that. <laughs> yep. Chat, now's your time to get, get your icon, get your favorite emoji in, whatever symbolizes cravings to you. I want to know. I mean, maybe honestly, crave croissant croissants. does. Croissant definitely signifies crave cravings for me. So right, cool. So um, these are all just sample icons that they had in there. So I will drop them in. One thing you know we did talk about quickly is maybe we want to make these more illustrative um, or colorful. I think maybe let's get some icons in here first, and then we can play around with that. But mm-hmm. I do think it would be important for there to be some color in this bottom navigation, right? Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just kind of kind of plain. Um, as a little gray bar. So again, chat, if you've got suggestions, let us know. Um, I think I grabbed this one um, as I was thinking maybe like a read icon. Alexis, how do we feel about going literal? Do we think we maybe need something a little more? <laughs> no, I think uh, that's a pretty good, um, That's that makes sense for read. I think any more and it's a little too heady. <laughs> right. <laughs> like you've been read. Sometimes going literal is best, <laughs> right? Like Sometimes it works out. The read is a perfect for read. Um, Beck just dropped in the drooly face emoji, which might, I mean, that's perfect for cravings. It find 100% like that. is. I have no idea if that existed here, but let's, I mean, let's Whatever just show is. everyone what we've got, right? So we've got some beverages. Um, we've got a tea kettle. We've got some milk. We've got a teapot. We have a little truck with food. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Um, We've got a menu. We've got like a pizza, hot dog. We got a pie emoji. We talked a lot about the donut yesterday. So Mm -hmm. the donut is where everyone's feeling. That could be a fun placeholder, a donut. Yeah, Yeah, that could be okay. Um, And then we've also got all these kitchen options, right? Mm -hmm. So like maybe it's the little chef hat. Maybe we're encouraging people to come. I love that. You want to do the chef hat? Let's do the chef, chef hat's adorable. 
okay. Or the mittens are also really cute. But the mittens are cool. They look they look like more like a weather theme. It's cold outside. That's fair. Vibe. <laughs> That's fair. You know, I looked at them and immediately went oven mitts. But if that was not your gut reaction, let's not even go there. Right? Mittens why is my, give, probably mine. <laughs> why give them a platform? Yeah, it's amazing not- what happens when you pull a. Um, icon away from its set and being like, you know what, that, that actually looks like nothing like what I was expecting. This chef's had a little, is a little bit weirder than I thought. It does look like a a little bit like a smokestack, but you know what? I think it's going to work. I think we can uh, assume it's a chef's hat. Exactly. Cool. So we've got the watch and I think maybe we've got videos and photos in here. Um, And we probably could have added some more options for iconography in here, but we've just been staring at photos of food all day. Um, so I don't know. What do you think about just like these, maybe this simple like watch thing, or we could go with like a tiny old timey television. What, what's speaking to you? (laughs) Old timey television. Always, always. Come back to me and then ask. I think we're going to have to hop in with a chat bubble. Yeah. What is ask to you chat? What does symbolizes ask? Yeah. Is it a comment? Is it a question mark? Is it a... Yeah, I did pull in a whole bunch of different chat-like options. So, I mean, maybe we go with something like this because there's sort of the promotion of the back and forth between Chrissy and everyone else. Um, I don't know. What do we think? Getting a lot around ask, but, you know, or or what about, you know, there's one with quotes. That's a quote, a quote kind of works. Hmm. Ooh, guide me. I don't see it. Or do we just go all out the window and just go get like another food piece of food and throw it in there? For them? All right, let's just get a piece of food. And let's throw just grab it in there. Of, symbolizes asking. What do you ask for? What kind of food? Hmm. I like that there's a snowflake going on in there. Maybe the fridge. Um, ooh, I was gonna say. Oh, maybe the, the cookbook. Menu. Yeah, or the menu. The menu or the cookbook, whatever you want to call it. Um. Why not? And you know what? Maybe maybe we should do that for Reed. I don't know. There's there's so many different options here. There's a lot here. There's right. a maybe lot. you should be the fork and knife in the table set. Who knows? Ooh, <laughs> look at that. There's oh, a great. lot happening. We've we have officially yeah reached we're, a we're lot. We're coming up on on just, just a couple more minutes here. Yeah. And so uh, and it's great. You've made such progress in that short amount of time. Yeah. So now that you've brought these over into this component itself, has it changed? Because the actual menu is the component. And has it actually changed throughout your app? And it should. Let's double check. It's like a magic. Look theme. at that. Wow. There you go. Boom. There you go. I well, didn't even finish editing the whole thing, but <laughs> it's fine. It's there. Well, also, yeah. I think we have time for a really quick walkthrough and um, let's do it. Some goodbyes, and this has been really fun. This has um, been great. I'm you really know, I've really to have been on here with you. This. this has been oh, fun. Yeah. Cool. So let's to hear about all the other things you've done. You do with this uh, with this app, or do you think you'll post this to Behance? I as think a so. Yeah. Cool. Why not? I mean, I think we've had a lot of fun. We've gotten a lot of input. So yeah, let's let's share it with the world on Behance. So keep a keep a lookout, everyone. It should be there. Cool. So let's just quick again hop over to prototyping mode and just take one more peek. Cool. So we've got the Chrissy Teigen logo. We've got our recipes. Um, and we decided that this was the cravings side, right? You could see. Um, if we had some more time, maybe we'd change that icon to red so we could see it. But I'll play around with it before I post it to Behance. Um, and then we've got our read, watch, and ask. You can see that the footer's just sticking along for the ride. And we can hop into our spicy miso pasta recipe. So we've got our ingredients here. We've got the amount of time it serves, a quick little description. And then we've got the top comments um, from Alexis and Paul. And the option to see all comments or we've made this. Um, and then you could click over to directions, uh, which sort of transitions into one step directions. We decided one step, one by one would be better than just you know putting everything on the page at once. So we've got our directions. Uh, we have the ability to hold down the shift bar and say next, next. Boom, Beautiful. look at that. And there's a new copy, new content. We can see that. 
um, yeah, I mean, I think all in all, we've done a ton, and then and I'll and, the, you, guys and you have the profile page as well. Yeah, yeah, we didn't hook that up, which we could hook it up to the navigation, but we didn't do it. So mm -hmm. here it is. Yeah, we've got a photo of Alexis, quote unquote. <laughs> uh, we've got um, a quick little description. We can see the hashtags that she's following. Uh, we can see the favorite recipes, and then um, we've got a sneak peek of her cookbook and what she's actually made. So I think we've gotten a lot done. I think this has been a ton of fun. So thanks for following along and hanging out with me, Alexis. It is, I just did the- uh, Chef's kiss. Chef kiss. Uh, it's beautiful. It works well. And you have accomplished a lot in these last two days. So um, yeah. I just want to say thank you for joining us. And everybody make sure to follow Brittany, find her on Behance, find her on her socials. And um, thanks again for joining us and make sure to tune in tomorrow. Yeah, spam me with the croissant emojis. Oh, yeah. I welcome. And hurry up it. and spam croissant emojis. All right, guys. We'll see Thanks you later. so much for having me. All right.